This is Official Nerd Business. Hello nerd boys and girls, welcome back to our programming series. Today we are taking a swing at Euler problem number 26. And we will be using Python 3 to solve it. However, we are going to start on a spreadsheet as you might uh, see on the screen currently. This is not the place we usually start. We do however have the problem at hand, so let's look at it. Reciprocal cycles. It describes a unit fraction as being 1 in the numerator and then the decimal representation of the unit fraction with the denominators 2 to 10 are given here. 1 divided by 2 leads to 0 0.5, 1 divided by 3 is 0 0.3 named parentheses. Uh, 1 divided by 7 for instance is 1 4 and 2 8 5 7 in parentheses again uh, 1 8 is 0 0.125 and here it's described where the parentheses mean uh, where the 6 in parentheses mean 1 6 6 6 6 6 6 and it has a one digit recurring cycle can be seen that 17 has a six digit recurring cycle so the parentheses denote uh, a recurring cycle so a, an ever repeating cycle of numbers then the challenge find the value of d less than 1000 where d 1 divided by d has the longest recurring cycle in its decimal fraction part so if we were to divide all numbers from uh, 1 up to 1000 if we divide 1 by any of those numbers, where will we see the longest tail of recurring digits? So this continues infinitely, but the original part, where is it the longest? As you can see in their test case for 1 through 10, 1 divided by 7 is the longest with 6 recurring uh, digits in its decimal expansion. So I'm going to start off on a spreadsheet here to just see how the numbers are moving about. Um, to solve this we will be using some variation on long tail division if, as a matter of fact and I've set up a little something here uh, where I can enter numerator and denominator and um, we can see here whatever the spreadsheet thinks that should be and we are going to approximate that number uh, with the part below here using uh, integer division and a little bit of a modulo so a remainder now 1 divided by 1 is not very exciting. Let's enter 1 divided by 2. And we can see that that should be 0 0.5. Now these digits here are going to make uh, the number we want. We are going to uh, we are going to find every digit that needs to be here by uh, doing a simple division. We divide 1 by 2, which is 0, so that's the leading 0, leaving 1. And now we are going to bring the remainder, the modulo of this uh, division, uh, we are going to multiply this by 10. Not to increase its value, but to simulate decreasing the denominator to find out the next digit here. So we are going to move along this string of digits and every time we move one position to the right, things get... 10 times as small as we were previously discussing, but since this number is not moving, we could we could also divide this by 10 instead of multiplying this by 10, but uh, then we would get all kinds of decimals in here, and to keep the numbers we're working with integer, we are going to bring this up one level, so we are going to move the expected 5 here, we are going to shift this one, one column to the left by multiplying it by 10 instead of bringing the denominator down by dividing it by 10. So here's our uh, uh, remainder times 10. We are still going to divide by this number. Uh, this formula can stay whatever it is. And this remainder as well. And we hit a zero. Now we can see here as soon as um, our remainder is zero, uh, we can never multiply zero by 10 to get another number. We are done here. So the decimal expansion of 1 over 2 is simply 0 0.5 and there it ends. Um, if we were to take a look at um, 1 divided by 8, the cycle continues slightly longer but it isn't a recurring cycle yet. Uh, 1 divided by 8 doesn't work, gives us the leading 0. 
In fact, if we were to increase the denominator to something like 15, then we do get the 1 at the front here, so that's, that's nice. Uh, but we are looking at uh, reciprocals or, or unit fractions, if you will, so we are dividing 1 by a given denominator. Uh, so we get the, um, the 0 here, the 1 here, and we still have a remainder. So we're going to copy this line again, and we still have a remainder. And we are dividing 40 by 8, which leaves us without a remainder, and here is our decimal expansion of this fraction here. 1 divided by 6, let's see now. Now something funny happens. Uh, we get the leading 0, we then get the 1, and we get multiple 6s, and we can see that we will continue getting 6s because uh, we get the remainder here and the remainder is used to construct the next division we're going to do and we get the same remainder. So this shows us that whenever we um, uh, we see a remainder that we've seen before we have hit a cycle. That's because this is a, a modulo of a division and a remainder of a division and when we get the same remainder again, we will enter the same loop again. And in this case, the, the number 4 keeps looping to 40 divided by 6. We'll leave a remainder of 4 again uh, for 36, which fits in 6 times. Um, and again and again and again. Um, so whenever we see a um, remainder that we've seen before, we know we've hit a cycle. And in this case, uh, the cycle length is only 2 because we've only seen 2 different remainders from this way of dividing numbers. Uh, let's try their seven example. Um, we need to expand this a little bit further until we see the same remainders coming up again. So one, two, three, four, five, six different remainders until we hit the next one. And this tells us something very important. Um, we've seen this ending in zero, which tells us that we're done. Um, but now we are seeing six remainders, which is the maximum number of remainders you can get by dividing by seven. Um, because the uh, modular operation can only yield these results. Um, there cannot be a remainder of 0 because that's a clean division of uh, a number by 7 and there cannot be a remainder greater than 7 because obviously 7 fits in a remainder greater than that and then this number would be 1 higher instead of this being 9. Um, so the maximum number, the maximum length of this streak here can only be this number minus 1. There can only be that many modulos from this number as itself minus one. So we are, if we look at numbers up to a thousand, then uh, bets are that there will be a very high 900s number that will have a cycle of length 900 and x minus one. So that's important to keep in mind when we start coding this. We might code this. Uh, top to bottom, so 1000 to 0, uh, and, and stop whenever we uh, find an n-1 cycle. So that's the basics of what we are going to, uh, to program here. You can see that uh, taking these remainders and multiplying them by 10, or, in, or vice versa, taking this down one order of magnitude, we can look at the next digit in the cycle, the digit rolls out and the remainder tells us, uh, gives us input for what the next digit is going to be. Uh, one interesting case might be 11, where we uh, do get a, uh, a repeating cycle with a couple of zeros in it. You can see the first zero here, the second zero here, and these zeros occur when uh, we've divided this number by 10, but it still wasn't enough to be bigger than this, so there's still nothing that fits in here. So zeros fall into this cycle quite naturally. And you can see the 0909 cycle here. So this is a very small period. Only two, in fact. Um, but you can see how the, the zeros work through this. 
so when we have a remainder zero we need to stop um, but the uh, digit column can have a zero just fine so that's that might be uh, quite a lot of information to take in this might also be um, sufficient input for you to try this on your own so I highly encourage you to pause the video and uh, and have a crack at it So here we are in PyCharm. I've set up the uh, base template file for Euler Problem 26 with all the usual bells and whistles as I do in all my videos. There's the title of the problem, there is an uh, input parameter defined in the, uh, in the doc string at the top um, where we are interested in the highest test case being 1000. I have tagged this with divisions and reciprocals. And here's the description that we've just seen in the spreadsheet as well. We are going to attempt to solve this. And once again, I'd like to use a um, an iterator. So we're going to use the yield operation. Uh, I'm going to define a function for that, which will uh, spit out digit by digit. So I think get next digit might be an appropriate name for that we will get a numerator and a denominator which is the top and bottom part of the uh, starting fraction and we are interested in um, the remainders and the digit uh, basically if we if we enter a uh, 1 and a 7 here we first want to get a 0 back um, and we can do that with the function um, divmod. If we enter here the numerator and the denominator in this, this will return a uh, tuple for us with a 0 for the integer division part and a 1 for the uh, modulo part, the remainder part. And we are very much interested in those. So I want to uh, catch the digit and I want the remainder or uh, modulo bit and I can simply assign them like this because uh, this returns tuple and whenever you have something returning multiple values in any sort of list construction and you set the same number of arguments at the other side of the uh, the other side of the uh, sign instruction here uh, then each element element 0 will be assigned to the first variable here element 1 will be assigned to the second uh, etc um, so yeah this will work fine and we want to yield it as I said I want to make an, an uh, uh, another iterator function so we're going to yield the digit and the remainder here and in uh, the solution we're going to make we're going to check if this was a remainder that we've seen before now I want to set up a loop that keeps on running until we don't call next on this iterator anymore it's not the problem of this iterator function to see if it's repeating itself we are just simply interested in whatever digit comes next it's up to the calling function to quit whatever looping construction we build around it when we see repetition now let's see here um, basically I want to do this again but instead of entering numerator again the denominator stays the same but the numerator is basically whatever modulo we got the last time times 10 and we are going to multiply that by 10 right here times is 10 then we are going to again yield the tuple So if we give this test run, uh, we don't want to actually do this, but we want to uh, get an iterator by instantiating the get next iterator, iterate, uh, get next digit iterator for one and seven. 
this was a nice example with a nice long cycle so let's check that out and then um, we want to call it 10 times to see that it repeats actually um, We are going to get a tuple out of our iterator function, which we are going to call by doing this. Um, and let's see here. Uh, digit. Format and I am going to simply throw in T here, which should expand to both places that we are. With. What does this button do? Crashes, of course, does to put index out of range. Not less fancy. What is that then? Right. Um, I needed this star here because the tuple doesn't auto expand, so it was trying to fit the entire tuple into the first parentheses and was left without arguments for the second parentheses. And the um, asterisk here tells Python to expand this tuple to fit into multiple variables to, um, to evaluate every value of the tuple on its own rather than as a complete uh, whole tuple. So here's the result, if we uh, call this iterator 10 times, we get the 0, the 1, the 4, the 2, the 8, and the 5, and the 7 as we've seen before, and then again the 1, the 4, the 2, and in the remainders you can see that as well, so we get the, the let's see the part where it starts repeating itself, yes we get the 1 here, and the 1 here, we get the 3 here, and the 3 here, we get the 2 here, and the 2 here, etc. So cycle length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 before we hit the next repetition. So yeah, it seems that our function is working. So now let's build a, a construct around it um, where this we are going to take along to the attempt here. For Q in range. N zero in fact minus one. So we're gonna set up a range from whatever maximum number we are going to test up to or down to zero by subtracting one from each iteration from the number Q and we want to set up a um, we also want to keep track of whatever modulos we've already seen here, which at the start, of course, is an empty list. Um, we want to get the next I'm going to set up a sort of infinite loop where we're going to break out of it down here. We are not going to print every time we call this function. That would be a bit redundant. Um, if our remainder is zero, then we can't. Uh, we found a uh, naturally ending cycle of digits. So for uh, a half, we found 0 0.5, and then a zero. So we know we can't expand any further or if this number is already on the list of modulus seen then we want to break out of this loop and if we are still here then we want to 
append to this mod scene fun uh, list append this point load again. That's basically it. So when we do break out of it, uh, we want to. Set the new maximum cycle length if applicable. So if the length of the modulo which we've seen, this basically keeps track of how long the cycle was. If this is greater than um, Then retain it, and if this is also if this is true, then we just want to break out of the for loop as well, because we start at the top and we find a number that's. Uh, that has the maximum number of modulos in its cycle, then we basically know that this is the right number and we want to return this particular number. So if we were to run this for 10, we should get back um, this is, by the way, this is the number of uh, iterations. We don't want that. We want the actual number that was responsible for giving us this, um, which is Q. This should be N. So if we were to run this, then we get back number 7 with a cycle length of 6. If we don't break early out of this loop, so if there's a number that has a greater cycle than any number below it, but it is, say it's uh, itself minus 2 for instance, that, that might be a possibility, then the next number below it might, have, uh, might actually have this, but still be less than or just equal to whatever we've already said, so out of safety precautions let's add this, alright um, so it seems to yield the correct result for uh, our test case everything below 10 we know that 7 is the longest with a cycle length of 6 in particular um, so let's run it from mainpy, let's see how fast this runs, let's see if we get the correct answer for a thousand We want to run program 26 with the default parameter. Yes, there is a number high up in the 900s which has a cycle length of itself minus one. So if you enter this number over at Project Euler, you will get the green check mark. And that's it. I think we've already optimized this problem very much by uh, simply looking at how we are going to uh, do this. Note, by the way, that if you were to uh, divide 1 by uh, 983 and get a 982 uh, cycle length of digits, then um, Python will not show this correctly in its own basic decimal expansion. That has to do with floating point errors. So by doing a long division, by if we step back to the spreadsheet uh, by doing this approach we uh, are in fact more precise than how python would calculate this natively and uh, it gives us a chance to effectively look at 
these remainder bits, look at the cycles that are created within it. And this expansion is huge, as you can see here. Uh, this goes on for almost a thousand digits before it starts repeating itself, so it goes on infinitely. And if we were to uh, drag this down a while, then we would start to see um, from row 1000 or 900 something, then you would start to see repetition. So this modulo goes on, on and on and on, 982 times. I hope you've enjoyed this, I know I have, using the spreadsheet to find out how all the numbers interact, how every little bit of this solution interacts with all the numbers already on screen, it was very nice, it gave us a very good foothold on uh, checking out how to program for this. Uh, the solution to this might, uh, you, you, may find, you may find the solution to this problem on my GitHub page, link in the description, and I hope to see you again next time for problem number 27. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.